In this video, I will provide you with a method you can use to figure out your window and door header sizes according to one of the popular building code books. And I will put the page numbers, reference numbers, and the book that I got them out of in the video description area. And I will not be providing you with the chart because I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted by the manufacturer of the book. However, I am going to provide you with some of the stuff that might be difficult to interpret or difficult to understand in those pages. So let's go ahead and get started with the first item, and that will be the width of the buildings. And on the page I'm referring to, it should say building width, and then in parentheses it will have feet. And then you're basically going to have three columns. One for any building that's going to be 12 feet and less in width, one that's going to be 24 feet or less, and the next will be 36 feet or less when looking up your header sizes. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the ground snow load with PSF in parentheses. And the PSF stands for pounds per square foot. And that's going to be referring to a snow load. And the snow load for 30 foot or less will apply to any area where it snows or does not snow with less than 30 pounds per square feet of snow on the ground. And for example, living in Southern California where I do not get any snow, that will be the column that I use. As far as the other columns, you can usually contact your local building department or a local structural engineer to provide you with that information. And the page I'm referring to in the book has three separate columns, one for 30, 50, and 70. And keep in mind that if your snow load is above 70, then you might not be able to use any of the information in this book. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the column marked girders and headers supporting and take a look at the first column, roof and ceiling. And the window and door headers for this column will be for a header supporting a ceiling and a roof. And for those of you wondering if you can use smaller headers where you're not going to have as much weight as you would on this side, then I would probably say no because it doesn't provide any reference for that. So let's go ahead and jump to the first window and take a look at the span. And since I don't know if the span they're referring to is the rough opening or the opening in between the trimmers or the length of the header, I would simply suggest going to the next size up. For example, if I have a four foot rough opening width or the measurement between the inside of the trimmers and my chart calls out for a single two by six, then I would simply suggest using a two by eight to be on the safe side. So here we have a single 2x6 that will be nailed to this top framing plate along with another board so that we can get some drywall nailing on this side here. And I would also like to point out that this 2x6 can be located anywhere in this area and does not need to be located on the outside. For example, if it will work better for you, you can locate it on the inside or in the middle. And if it calls out for two 2x6s, you might be able to use this method here to where you have one on the inside and one on the outside without the flat 2 by on the bottom like we had in the previous example. Or you can use this method here where you have two of them right next to each other and you will nail those together and a shaped piece of lumber like this for the inside. And that will look something like this with the nails, 16D nails. And since there is no reference to any nailing schedule, you can put as many nails as you want into this or as few nails as you want into this. And of course, if it requires three two by sixes, then it might look something like this with a spacer board here. And if, for example, it required four, then you might need to make the wall a little wider. And keep in mind here, I'm using a two by six wall in my example, and the three framing boards or two by sixes might not work in a two by four wall. So you might need to adjust the thickness of your wall according to the header width. And since there are no nailing specifications for these boards, you can always frame it like this with a spacer in the middle somewhere. 
and the last board on the outside so that you have a solid surface on both sides of the wall for nailing the drywall on the inside or the siding or stucco on the outside. And my preference would be a solid header. And I can say that I have never framed a house here in California without a solid header. Or in other words, I have never used a 2x6 or a 2x8 on any job that required a structural engineer. Now in the next section where we have roof, ceiling, and one center bearing floor, that would be the roof, ceiling, and floor. So that would be anything underneath the floor in this situation. And in the next one where we have a roof, ceiling, and two center bearing floors, that would be a situation like this where we have a roof, a ceiling, floor number one, floor number two, and again, anything underneath this area in the crawl space or maybe even in a basement. And in our last section, roof, ceiling, and two clear span floor, this would be any opening for a door or window in the basement or crawl space area. Again, underneath a roof, a ceiling, and two floors. And then as far as the lower level here, that would fall into the roof, ceiling, and one clear span floor. And then the upper level would fall into the roof and ceiling categories. Next up, let's go ahead and calculate the openings for these two windows here, starting with the upper window that is only going to be supporting a roof and a ceiling. And if this opening is four foot and the building is 20 foot wide, placing it into the 24 foot building width category, then we're going to need one 2x10 and two trimmers. And the number of jack studs or trimmers required is going to be in the NJ column. Now, if I wanted to make it one inch smaller to where it's going to be 3 foot 11, I could use one 2x8 and two trimmers on each side. Let's go ahead and go to the bottom where we are going to look at the window here that will be supporting the roof, ceiling, and one clear span floor. And if I have a four foot opening, I'm going to need one 2x12 and three jack studs or three trimmers on each side. And if you scroll down the column a little further, you're going to come to a four foot three span with two trimmers or two jack studs on each side and two 2x8s instead of one 2x12. Next up, let's take a look at some of the notes where the letter A says spans are given in feet and inches. So for example, if we go to the top of the page right next to 1-2x6, we will have 2-8. The 2 represents the feet. On the other side, the 8 represents the inches. The letter B spans are based on minimum design properties for number 2 grade lumber, meaning that you can use better lumber. You just can't not use worse lumber. For example, you can use number one or select grade lumber. However, you might not be able to use number three or a utility grade lumber. Letter C is telling you that the width of the building will be measured on this side if the ridge is running in this direction. Letter D provides us with an example of the number of jack studs required to support each end, which I already went over. Letter E talks about the pounds per square foot ground snow load to provide you with an example as I suggested in the video for all areas that receive less than that including where I live in Southern California. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at what they're referring to in letter F. And if my interpretation of this is correct, they're referring to headers that are not directly connected to the top framing plates. And you will need to multiply 0.7 times the opening span of the desired building specified for that opening. And to provide you with an example of how you're going to do the math on that, let's just go ahead and enter in 0.7. And then we're going to multiply it by inches instead of feet. However, you can multiply it by feet if that's going to be easier. So let's just go ahead and enter in 48. And that's going to be 33.6 inches. And this is now going to be the new maximum length for that particular opening that can be used in a particular building design 
design. And hopefully by now you have a better understanding of how you can calculate the header size for a particular building that falls into any of the categories listed on page 510 or 511 from the 2018 International Building Code book. And one more thing I would like to throw out is to remind you that if there are any concentrated loads or other structural load transfers near or around a window or door opening, then you probably won't be able to use the numbers in this book. And as always, if you have any questions at all or something that I missed in the video or even a mistake or misinterpretation of anything I said in the video, feel free to leave that in the comment area and I will address it as soon as possible.